The first helical electro submersible pumps to be designed in Australia with the mono sub rotor. Released to the market in the mid 80s, the sub rotor was the foundation to the current sun sub pump range, and both ranges now use the same wet ends. The following video is designed to provide instruction, tips, and things to look out for related to the complete disassembly and reassembly of the sun rotor pump end, commonly referred to as a wet end. We'll also show the correct identification of worn components. Remember, safety first. Although not covered in this video, Mono regards safety as a critical factor when undertaking any service on the Mono range. To prevent injury when installing or removing the pump from the borehole, always use suitably rated lifting equipment and adequate PPE for the situation. The typical mono submersible pump consists of the following components. A motor with a flexi shaft adapter, a motor adapter, a flexi shaft, a barrel, a socket, a rotor, a stator, two rubber stabilizers and a non-return valve. To begin, you must check which model pump and motor you're repairing to ensure correct ordering of replacement components. The etching number on the motor adapter you see here was introduced in 2009. Prior to this, a sticker was attached to the motor with this similar detail. On the etching, there are two different sets of identification numbers. The first set is the pump model, which you'll need to understand for what replacement components are required. And as we show here, this pump coating will be on models manufactured from 2012. The first two characters, SS, identify the unit as a sun sub, which is exactly the same identifier as on the sub rotor. The next three numbers are the pump size. Seen here, the 042 is a 42 size. The following four numerics are an internal mono sequence number. The next two letters will be PR, indicating a plated rotor with a nitrile stator. It's important to note that some codes will end with a number. Nothing in this position means it's a standard Mark I rotor, but a number three means a temperature Mark III rotor, and the number five in this position means temperature Mark V rotor. The second set of codes is a unique serial number, which you'll need to state with any warranties or case returns. To identify which motor you have if replacement is necessary, look on the motor casing for a sticker like seen here. Relay the kilowatt and voltage identifiers directly to Mono and they'll advise you of the current part number. The current rotor codes are SFSS, followed by three numbers depicting pump size, then the numbers 2510. Any older codes are shown here. The example rotor seen here has bad pitting corrosion from a potentially aggressive water bore. Although this may not seem like severe damage, this will in a short time significantly damage the stator, reducing the pump's efficiency. Although a PC pump can sustain pumping solids, such as sand, more efficiently and over greater periods of time compared to a centrifugal pump, they will eventually wear out and need replacing. The rotor you're looking at here is from a pump that is operated in an extreme amount of sand over a very long period. To remove the rotor from the flexi shaft, unscrew the rotor with a 22mm spanner on the flat on the rotor and a 21mm spanner on the flat on the motor flexi shaft adapter. Please note the flexi shaft ends can break their thread seal on either end of the shaft. In the image you see here, it is opened on the motor end. If it's necessary to replace the rotor, then use a 6mm open-ended spanner on the flats of the flexi shaft along with a 22mm spanner on the rotor flats to unscrew. Prior to 2009, there were no flats on the flexi shaft ends. 
To remove this style flexi shaft, we recommend using soft grips or equivalent on the threads to protect them. It's imperative that at no time you attempt to remove the flexi shaft by gripping on the halar coating with any hand tools, as it will damage the coating, causing premature failure and will void the warranty. Next, using a pair of Stilsons, remove the foot valve from the Stator, but do not use a vice grip or Stilsons on the Stator housing under any circumstance. Damage to the outside of the Stator tube can result in loss of performance and even a complete seizure of the pump. Using your Stilsons and a pipe strap tool, remove the Stator from the barrel. A handy tip here is to use a strip of emery tape rough side in between the Stator barrel and the strap tool to make a grip. Once you've completed these steps, you can now inspect the Stator for signs of wear. If you observe or feel wear such as shown here on this section Stator, it's necessary to replace it. Please note that if it is necessary to replace the rotor, it is also recommended that the Stator be replaced at the same time. Mono would recommend that all other remaining components, such as the pump barrel, socket, motor adapter and stabilizers, should be assessed at this time and replaced if any excessive corrosion or wear is evident. The following sequence is to reassemble a complete pump using either new replacement parts or reusing the old components. The first step is to tap the rubber stabilizers onto the barrel using a rubber mallet. Wipe stag sealant or any equivalent onto the thread before screwing the socket to the barrel. Also coat stag sealant on the other pipe threads. The thread on the stator where it screws into the non-return valve and where the socket screws into the stator. Be aware that equal threads should be seen on either side of the socket once it's completely screwed in. It's vital that you protect the state or tube from any potential crushing forces, such as when using vice grips or stilsons. When fitting the stator, it's important to first look for the wording to suction end. This needs to be oriented towards the barrel, away from the non-return valve. Our final step is to coat the flexi shaft threads with anti-seize. Insert new O-rings into the rotor head if necessary, then hand screw the shaft firmly into place. Then insert a new O-ring into the motor adapter if necessary and hand screw it into place. Using the same spanners on the rotor and motor adapter, tighten the threads firmly. However, take care as you tighten the rotor and adapter against the flexi shaft as over tightening can lead to twisting the flexi shaft out of shape, thereby rendering it unusable. Now wet the rotor and stator and carefully insert the rotor through the motor adapter and barrel. Please avoid using any oil-based lubricant for this process, as doing so can degrade the rubber of the stator, causing early failure. Take care when inserting the assembly through the barrel to avoid any damage to the halar coating or the rotor. The final step is to assemble the four spring washers, the earth tag and nuts that hold the motor to the pump. Tighten the two nuts opposite each other first to ensure correct alignment.